Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 48 is what I'm going to look at. And uh, we're going to jump over to Luke chapter 2. Mary or Jesus? You probably never thought about it, but when the angel told Mary that she was going to have a child by the Holy Spirit, she immediately began to proclaim a wonderful message, which Rick read that message about the greatness of God and extolled His blessings upon mankind. That's the passage, Luke chapter 1, verse 46 to 45, 55. It gets its name, the Magnificat, from the Latin word for magnifies. Mary magnifies God, not herself. Our Catholic friends, she magnifies God Amen. and lifts Him up, not herself. There's over a billion people in the world today that lift up Mary instead of Jesus. The world today, today needs Jesus. We don't need Mary. As blessed as she is, and she says she's blessed among women, but she's still a woman. We need Jesus more than anything. Amen. We need Jesus. There's a big difference between Jesus and Mary. Jack, why are you preaching on that Christmas? Because there's a difference. Mary gave birth to Jesus. Jesus is God incarnate. Let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse 46. The lowliness of Mary. Luke 1, 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. My soul. My soul, me. My personality, who I am. I lift up the Lord. My soul doth lift up and glorify the Lord. Verse 47. My spirit hath rejoiced in God. Now listen to this. It doesn't end there. My spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. Amen. My spirit is rejoicing in God, my Savior. Mary needed a Savior. Amen. Some people believe, 1.3 billion Catholics believe that Mary to be sinless and a perpetual virgin and the co-redeemer with Christ. But clearly, she was expressing her joy in God, forgiving her for her own sin. She was a sinner. She's still a sinner yep. in the flesh. Amen. And once she trusts Christ as her Savior, we're just saved sinners, right? Heaven, I tell people all the time, heaven's going to be full of sinners saved by the grace of God, Amen. cleansed and made pure yep. by His precious blood. Verse 48, For He hath regarded the low estate of His handmaiden. There was a professor that came out last week and said that God coerced and sexually abused Mary. Did you read about that? A professor <laughs> thinks God is a sexual abuser of His treatment of Mary. I kid you not. And people are listening to Him. Foolish, crazy people turning the love of God and the grace of God into lasciviousness, the Bible tells us. Making it a bad thing. You know, they, the... What are those minds I talk about all the time in Romans chapter 1, verse 28? Uh, rep, thank you, Rick. Reprobate minds. They are reprobated to death. I mean, I'm telling you. They are... People are... They've just lost it. You know... He hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. Her, humili her humility was most touching. She was a very young girl now, lady. She was 15, 16, no more than 17, and had not come from a family of wealth or prominence. She was not from a wealthy family or a prominent family. Handmaiden is a term for a very lowly servant, an average girl. Mary was nobody who God turned into a somebody as He does everyone who puts their faith and trust in Him. You know, the Holy Spirit overcame Mary. The Holy Spirit overcomes us when we trust Him as our Savior. He comes into our heart and He dwells in us and we are special. Amen. We're special in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not pride. That's gratefulness. Like Mary. Mary was grateful and magnified the Lord when He touched us. Listen. One thing that happens to everyone who trusts puts their trust in Christ. We know in our hearts that we have become very precious to Christ, haven't we? Yeah. That doesn't give us pride, but gratefulness and love for our great and our marvelous Savior. Oh, what a marvelous Savior we have. 
We don't have a religion that tells us do this and do that. The cross says it's already done, brother. Amen. It's done. D-U-N. Is that how you spell it? <laughs> done. Yep. Finished. Complete. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Blessed. That's all we call Mary. Blessed among women. Catholic tradition states that Mary was Joseph's second wife. Now listen to what Catholic tradition states. That Joseph, Mary was Joseph's second wife, wife, that he had children, he had children from a previous marriage, and that Mary was a perpetual virgin. Now that can't be true for seven reasons. I did my own research. Because I have a study Bible that says that Mary's a perpetual virgin. Or not a study Bible, but there's a study a study Bible that says that Mary, and a very reputable one, that says Mary is a perpetual virgin. Number one, no son of jo Joseph mentioned in the lineage of Jesus from Joseph's perspective in Matthew. There's no son of Joseph mentioned. Joseph could not have had children by previous marriage, for then Jesus would not have been the heir to the Davidic throne as the oldest son of Joseph. Secondly, no mention in the Bible that Mary would have married a widower or that Joseph was married before. True, there is no, not much information about Joseph, so he could have been married before, but not likely that the Lord would have chosen a previously married man with other sons and girls to be the earthly father of Jesus. It's just not likely. Thirdly, how come they traveled alone to Egypt and Bethlehem? Where was his other kids? Number four, Catholic tradition says that the brothers of Jesus were actually his cousins. But the Bible says that Jude was the brother of James, who were both Jesus' brethren. Matthew 13, 55 and 56. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas, and his sisters? Jesus said half-sisters. Are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? There are several other passages in the Bible, in the New Testament, that mention his brethren. Amen. Number five. Guys, when you take a man to be your wife, that includes all that a wife is. I don't know why any man would marry a perpetual virgin. There I said it. I'm going to marry a perpetual virgin. Are you nuts? <laughs> Let's move on. Number six. <laughs> Her being a perpetual virgin after Jesus was born is not even hinted at or even commanded of her nor necessary for her according to the scriptures. She was just, it says here, all generations shall call me blessed, not perpetual virgin. And number seven, Matthew 1, 25. And he knew her not till she had brought forth her, forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. He knew her not until. So, hide your ears if this offends you. He did know her biblically after Jesus' birth. That's what it says. So, our Catholic people, I can't call them, well, they're wonderful. Some of them are wonderful people and some are saved because some can be saved if they trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone for salvation. So I call them our friends. Think. Use your mind. Use the Scriptures. The Scriptures bear it out and the truth. Uh, don't believe and follow tradition. Follow the Scriptures. Follow the Scriptures. Uh, the perpetual virgin side argues as to why Jesus, while on the cross, said to John to take care of his mother if Jude and James were really his sons. You know, Jesus said, why didn't Jesus say, hey, where's my, my half-brothers? Why don't they take, they can take care of my mother? Why did he say John? Well, I'll tell you why. Uh, James and Jude, like the others, had fled. Only John was there. And I'm telling you, John was a young man. They say he was probably between 17 and 19 years old, and he may have needed a mother. And maybe for John more than it was Mary. We always think poor Mary. Mary was tough and strong. Now let me tell you, she had to be a tough woman. She went all the way to the cross with her son when the rest of them fled. 
And there she is by herself with the other Marys. The women held on, ladies. Us cowardly men fled. But one thing, <laughs> get out while the getting's good, right? One thing we know is that Jesus had brothers. Mary was not a perpetual virgin. She didn't need a virgin. She didn't need to be. It's not necessary. Mary is just the woman who gave birth to Jesus. She's very blessed among women. And we all would love to see Mary in heaven and ask her, what was it like? What was He like as a child? What was He like? We'll get to ask her those questions. Because God is her Savior. She told us that God saved her through Jesus Christ, the Son that was born to her. What a blessing it was to have the responsibility to raise God, to touch the face of God, to nurse God, to bathe God. What a blessing she had. She was considerably blessed. Blessed among uh, more than any other woman that gave birth. She gave the blessed birth. And we uh, adore her, but we don't worship her. She's not a Savior. We don't need to pray to Mary. We pray to the Lord Jesus Christ. The veil of the temple has been torn in two so we can reach the Holy of Holies and go to God directly through prayer. Prayer is our greatest weapon and our greatest, the thing we lack doing the most as Christians yeah. is praying. Right. You know, the devil mocks at our wisdom, laughs at our work and our programs, but he trembles when we pray. Amen. Pray. Have a regular prayer time. That's why I give you that thing in the bulletin so you can, that's your guide for your regular prayer time and Bible reading time. You must Get alone with the Lord. If you don't get alone with the Lord, you're going to be alone. Yeah. Mary was lowly, but she became great because of what God did. We are lowly sinners. We are in low estate. Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. He hath regarded the low estate of His handmaiden. We were all low, hopeless without a Savior, without a hope in the world. And we had these gods that people tell, uh, people tell me, uh, I don't believe in a God that would send any... I used to do jail ministry for 15 years, and they would tell us, I don't believe in a God. My God that wouldn't send anybody to hell. Well, your God would sure send you to jail. <laughs> I wouldn't want a God like that. Well, you know, that was Daddy's fault. It's never Mommy, Daddy. But anyway, they want a God that fits their sin and their appetites and their lusts. So they invent a God that's not the God of the Bible. God is love. You know, people tell you all the time, well, I believe in a God of love that won't send anybody to hell. Well, that's not the God of the Bible. You're missing out half of Him. He's a God of love. He's also God of justice and righteousness and righteousness and holiness. Amen. Praise God, He is a God of justice. Right. I don't want what I deserve. I want grace and mercy, don't you? And God Amen. gave us grace and mercy through Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't want what I deserve. People say, I want God to treat me fairly. Whoa! <laughs> you don't want that! Because you will get exactly what you deserve, no more, no less. Jesus paid our just deserts on the cross so that we can be righteous and holy in Him. People have got to understand that Jesus Christ is everything to us. He is our Lord, our God, our Savior. He's our best friend and He's our advocate and the enemy comes to us to try to destroy us, but we have an attorney. You know, when you get in trouble, you want an attorney. You want the best money can buy. I'd be in trouble because I ain't got money to buy the best. So I just try to stay out of trouble. But uh, we have an advocate, advocate with the Father, better than F. Lee Bailey, who was from Sayersville, by the way, a little town not too far from here. And he was known for his great oratory and great way to explain and make the, the guilty look innocent. 
Well, Jesus doesn't have to explain. He makes the guilty innocent. So when He comes, when the devil says, look what they've done, Jesus says, sorry, there is no charges against them. I took their sin. I paid their fine. Devil says, throw the book at them. Judge, God, throw the book at them. Jesus said, look in the book. Their fines are paid. Paid in full. Tetelestai. Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. It's complete. It's done. Our salvation is complete. Jesus was born so that we might have this great salvation. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How will we escape? Well, you won't. Secondly, that's the lowliness of Mary, the greatness of Jesus. Luke 2.13, turn over to Luke 2.13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Luke 2.13, And suddenly there was with an, the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, a heavenly host. Suddenly, now these are shepherds out there, and these angels come to these shepherds. One angel made an announcement, and then he was joined by a host, an entourage, an army of angels. Maybe they were waiting for the single angel speech to be done. The angels appeared before lowly shepherds and made this great announcement. Lowly shepherds, their job was to care for lambs. Jesus is the Lamb of God. This humble sight becomes the center of attention of heaven and earth. All of heaven and earth's attention is on this announcement. The angels came. Y'all ever seen a multitude of angels? If we saw one angel, it would scare us to death. But the Bible says we entertain angels unaware. I thought Kurt might have been an angel that walked in this morning. Nope. Just born again saint. All right. Amen. <laughs> he is real, isn't he, Dalton? He is a real person, isn't he? All right. Dalton verifies he's not an angel. Uh, but he will... Uh, he gave us a scare. That's all I can say. <laughs> lowly shepherds. Lowly. Shepherds cared for lambs. And I was just impressed reading this scripture again. How suddenly, suddenly, the angels appeared. Shepherds were... Now look, this is a prophetic implication of the last days. These angels... We're doing, these shepherds were doing what shepherds do, caring for sheep, boring, day after day, same old thing. Will this ever end? Will there be any, will we ever get these sheep out? Am I always going to be a shepherd? When's things going to, is there anything better than this? Then suddenly, when Jesus comes, it's going to be sudden. Jesus said in Revelation, Behold, I come quickly. I come quickly. God is not delaying. He is always right on time. And He's going to come for His church right on time. Right at the right time. He's warned us to be ready. He's told us to be ready. Shepherds were always guarding the sheep. They were ready. These must have been really faithful shepherds for God to come and announce His Son's birth. Suddenly, do you ever think about that? Suddenly, they were praising God and saying, angels praise God. They also give announcements. An army of angels from heaven were announcing this great event from heaven. I can't even imagine the glorious time what these shepherds saw. You know, we're going to be whisked one day into the presence of Jesus. And we're going to see glory. We're going to see angels singing. And praising God all of a sudden. Yeah. It's the same thing. God's going to take us from our mundane lives and from this old earth of our sicknesses and illnesses and 
Shepherds had a rough job, and it was at night. They've just had a long day. You walk with sheep, and you tend sheep, and individual sheep have concerns, and you're worried about predators. It's, it wasn't easy. You're out in the elements. And suddenly, the Bible says that we're going to be called up with the trump of God, the voice of the archangel. Angels will be present. We're going to be in the presence of angels in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye. Think about that. As shocked as these shepherds were, notice the shepherds didn't say a word, did they? What could you say? When we get into the presence of the Lord, we're going to finally have the church service of our lives. You're going to say to each other, now this is glory. I don't know if we'll be able to speak. We'll be in such joy. You know, I've told you all about that dream I had where uh, everybody got raptured and I got left behind. And I was so, I was the same. I was destroyed. I was destroyed. Kelly went up. I don't know why he went before me. That really, got him. that really got me right there. Why is he going? Well, he left you his phone. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the phone, Kelly. I got your phone. And Cindy went up, and Polly went up, so I know it had to be a dream. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> that's my sister. <laughs> and others went up, and... Uh, I'm just devastated. It seemed like for hours, but all of a sudden I went up and it's like I took off to heaven. It was the most glorious thing I ever. I have never had a dream like that. The feeling I had was euphoric, was total joy. I just can't describe it to you. I'm not putting what I dreamed in that scripture. Or anything like that. I'm not saying that's how it's going to be. I'm just tell you the joy I had when I knew I was going to Jesus. Now, I didn't see Jesus. I just knew I was going to Him. And I was so happy. And I just can't describe it. Suddenly, suddenly, listen. Verse 14. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Glory to God in the highest. The rare expression in the highest. This is where angels do not go. This message came straight from the throne of God. Hebrews 1, 3 and 4 says, When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than angels as he has an inheritance of pain, a more excellent name than they. Angels don't go to the highest, to the throne of God. Angels don't belong in the glorious highest heaven. That's a rare expression in the Bible. That means this came from God. This is God. This is His doing. This is His work. The angels are giving glory to God. He did it. It's God who's bringing this about. The God of the Bible. The God, the God of creation. Amen. The God of salvation. You know, Allah can't save you. Joseph of the Mormons can't save you. The God of the Mormons is not the God of the creation or the Bible. He's not a God of salvation. You know what separates our God from the gods of false religions? Jesus! I was reading about what Islam thinks about Jesus. And it's not much. A messenger. I read it straight from the Quran. He's a messenger of God as have been many messengers before. That's what the Quran says about Jesus. Let me tell you, if you're wrong about Jesus, you're wrong about everything else. And they are wrong about Jesus. The Mormons are wrong about Jesus. The Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong about Jesus. Many churches with a cross on their door or on their roof 
are wrong about Jesus. Giving glory to the works of man more than the Son of Man. Giving glory and salvation to what we can do rather than what He's already done. If you believe you have to, that you can keep yourself saved, then you're trusting in yourself and not the God of the Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ. Only He has you and can keep you. It says on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Because of Jesus, we no longer have to be the enemies of God. On earth, peace. You know, the secular people read that during Christmas time and think it's peace between men. No more war. Sorry. That's not our problem. We could put our guns down tomorrow and get rid of all our nuclear weapons and we'd still throw rocks at each other. Yep. We will just fight. That's the way it is. Can you have peace? You that had sisters and brothers growing up, did you have peace? Only when you sit down for a meal or at Christmas for five minutes because you're afraid Santa might get mad. Come on, be honest. We fight. We fuss. The only time I had peace with my brother and not aggravating him was when mommy was watching. I wasn't worried about daddy. He, he'd just throw a shoe and I could duck. But if he woke mommy up, I'm in trouble. We can be at peace with God through the forgiveness of our sins, through faith in this Christ child and child and His finished work on the cross. That's what peace on earth means. Goodwill toward men. Goodwill toward men. God is willing, not willing that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. God's will is that all men would come to Jesus Christ. Peace to them with whom He is well pleased. Peace to them with whom He is well pleased. He is only pleased with those who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If you don't put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the wrath of God abideth on you. Amen. Tell that to someone today. Well, I believe in God. You don't get any points for that. The devils believe and what do they do? Tremble. You've got to put your faith and trust in Christ. You've got to get your sins forgiven. You've got to deal with your sin problem. That's why Jesus came to give us peace with God. Peace with God. Forgiveness of sins. And to please God. Finally, we can please God by putting our faith and trust in Jesus. He's going to bring peace to the earth one day. That's for sure. Jesus will bring peace to the earth when He, come, when he returns with His church. When Jesus returns with His church, there will be peace. Mary or Jesus? I choose to honor Mary, but I choose Jesus as my Savior. Amen.